Wait, there's something very weak coming through. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Hello, fellow galactic listeners. I'm Heather Allred, and this is WSTR, a galactic public access Star Wars podcast. We are at episode 81, everybody, and today we're going to talk the tragedy of young Anakin Skywalker in the prequels. Joining me in the discussion today is Mr. Aaron Hulian. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. And of course... Mr. Todd Hoffman. What is going on? Yay! So, well, check us out on our social media, WSTR Media, all lowercase, all one word. Um, You can email us at mailbox at WSTRmedia.com. Leave us a voicemail message, 630-557-WSTR, 630-557-9787. Um, You can catch our whole catalog of episodes at www.wstrmedia.com. And if you haven't already noticed, we're live on the YouTube. We're streaming. We're streaming. So be sure to now subscribe to our YouTube channel so you do not miss the crazy of the live WSTR podcasting. It's it's raw. Yeah, it's raw. No, no post I don't know about that. No, we are yeah. a family friendly affair. Well, yeah, yeah but crazy, no, but family friendly. Yeah. No post production <laughs> fixes here. We're we're just doing it live. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, gentlemen, there's been some major activity happening this week. Yeah, which Did can only mean one thing. News of the week. News of the week. And now the Star Wars news of the week. So basically, uh, you know, if you're hiding under a rock or a tree or wherever, um, hanging upside down in a wampus cave, yes, yes. I mean, <laughs> like we won't judge, we won't judge, or you know, you're in a back to tank, you know, kind of recovering. Um, but basically, San Diego Comic Con was this weekend, and there was a lot of a lot of hot news out of San Diego Comic Con. So. Um, Really, we should start with the Star Wars news, I guess. Um, or yeah, we're gonna start. We're gonna if start we there. Must. Let's start there. Let's start with um, Dave Filoni took the stage on uh, seven nineteen, and plus a bunch of actors on um, from the Clone Wars because they're celebrating the ten year anniversary of Clone Wars, which is co- uh, Clone Wars came out in August, so they're celebrating the ten years. And out of that panel. They basically say, wait, Disney has saved Clone Wars and they're going to air some uh, 12 new episodes of Clone Wars. And of course, they had a tasty trailer for that. So, Mr. Aaron, why don't you launch the trailer? The name's Rex. But you'll call me Captain or Sir. War does not come with a guarantee. No soldier gets the promise of safety. My designation is Trooper 27-5555, sir. We call him Fives. I'm Heavy. This is Echo. I'm Commander Cody, your new boss. Sir, yes, sir! Looks like we got ourselves a batch of shinies, Commander. Look around. We are one and the same. Same heart, same blood. Your training is in your blood. My blood's boiling for a fight. So I have hope. any idea what this you This is our war. This can't be good. We need to pull back. We've got to get them to follow us. If we can draw them out, we can see them. If we can see them, we can hit them. Ah! Ah! Oh!
right, Rex. What's so important that you brought us all the way back here? Hello, Master. It's been a while. Well. <laughs> that was <laughs> well, quite the trailer. Well, well, well done. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so does this mean I have to go back and watch all the other ones? Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what it means. Okay. Yeah. No, so um, just a tiny recap there. Uh, yeah, you're seeing because Ahsoka basically left the order at the end of of Clone Wars, and they meet up again. So I just read the um, Ahsoka. They have some unfinished. They business. have some unfinished business, and I, I read the um, or listened to the audible book of Ahsoka, and this was teased in this. There's a couple little paragraphs about um, Ahsoka and what what happened there. So this is kind of interesting that they're going back and doing um, 12 more episodes of Clone Wars. So I thought that was very cool. Very cool trailer. <laughs> way, way to start off the, uh, you know, San Diego Comic-Con, you know, with a little Star Wars fun. Mm -hmm. So it, it was great. Um, Next up, there was a flurry of trailers that came out this weekend. Um, you had Titans. Titans um, is now DC Universe is doing a streaming service. And I don't know if you saw this, but um, Teen Titans. It's not really Teen Titans. It's just Titans. Um, and uh, Robin, basically, uh, they're like, where's Batman? And he's like, F Batman. You're like... <laughs> what's going on here so there's titans <laughs> there's uh they had showed some wonder woman footage from 19 wonder woman 1984 the sequel to wonder woman uh aquaman shazam uh and then there's another tasty trailer godzilla king of monsters aaron i think we should probably watch that one because that's probably my favorite out of all of them <laughs> king of the monsters king of the monsters <laughs> All right, well, without further ado, let's have at it. Do it. Our world is changing. The mass extinction we feared has already begun, and we are the cause. We are the infection. Like all living organisms, the Earth unleashed a fever to fight this infection. Its original and rightful rulers, the Titans. For thousands of years, these creatures have remained in hiding around the world. And unless all the Titans are found, our planet will perish, and so will we. They are the only guarantee that life will carry on. The king. 
And there you have it. There you Godzilla have it. Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yeah. So good. The score is so good in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Very, very uplifting. I wasn't uh, yeah. expecting that. Yeah. So, Which makes me wonder what kind of movie it's going to be. Right. Yeah. Because the first Godzilla was not uplifting. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Thanks, Gareth Edwards. Um, but I got you. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, well, and, and the first Godzilla, we only saw Godzilla for like five minutes. So this definitely seems like there's going to be a lot more monsters, you know. I got to go c- catch them all. Like Pokemon? Like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this this looks really good. Now, Heather, did you see the first Godzilla? I did not. Oh, my gosh. You, you didn't see Clone oh Wars. Gosh. You didn't see Godzilla. I don't know. It's all good. Aaron, did you no, see Godzilla? Did you guys. see um, Godzilla? What are we going to do with you? Yeah, I know. I did. Yeah. I'd like, I mean. Had, uh, had Qui-Gon Jinn in there. It did. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> no. I'm thinking, it's, I'm thinking someone else, not. No. Um, no it had Breaking had Bad a, uh, Guy. It had Breaking Bad Guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Wow, him. I'm blinking out tonight. Yeah. That guy. That guy. That guy. Her, um, gosh, I can't even think of his name. You're just blowing it tonight. <laughs> Come on, guys. Brian Cranston. There you there go. Thank you. See, thank you, Internet, for saving us again. The th- <laughs> See, the thing is, I typed in to search for it, and as soon as I was done typing it, before I hit enter, I'm like, Brian Cranston! It happened! It's just it's just there. That's how memory works. Right, exactly. It's unreliable. Well, that's how Google works. It just, like... About ready to type yep. it and it just comes to up. Uh, okay, so there's other. Go see Godzilla. Go see... It's not out yeah. yet. Well, <laughs> the trailer's out. Go see tra- no, watch the trailer. Now, do I have to watch yeah. the first Godzilla? Yeah. Yeah. Then you can watch. Um, you or, can... So I'll be, I'll be lost if I don't watch the first one. Uh, uh, maybe. Oh, okay. How lost can you be in a Godzilla yeah, movie? I... There's big lizard dudes. Yeah. They're stomping on everybody. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. If I'm not going to be stop lost, on me. I don't understand. It's the same movie. Right. Anyway, let's yep. move on. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> right. Okay, so there's more Star Wars news. Uh, two new Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's more Star Wars uh, news. Go ahead, Aaron. I got, I got this one. Two new Star Wars comic series were announced at the Lucasfilm publishing panel at Comic-Con. They're both unexpected projects that bring a new scope to the franchise's comic book line. First, the first one is absolutely massive. Uh, There's going to be three books, which will combine 30 issues across the prequel, original, and sequel eras. And each issue of the 30 will spotlight a different character from that era, and each era has a different writer attached. So how about that? It's like, this is like uh, a super duper crossover, you know, in the comic book world. This is like... Everything. Uh, Avengers Assemble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then uh, the second book is Star Wars Tales from Vader's Castle from IDW and Disney. It's an offshoot of IDW's all-ages, family-friendly Star Wars books from Kevin Scott, uh, author of Star Wars Adventures, and Derek Charm of Valiant High. It sets popular characters from Star Wars in Vader's Castle for Ghost Stories. So, ooh, you think, you think Trent will like that? Yeah, that sounds like a nice children's book, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, I think yep. I, I'm spooky, uh, spooky, spooky sta- uh, tales from Vader's castle. Come on, kids, let's talk about all these uh, kids I murdered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ghost, the ghost, of, the ghost bunch, of bunch kids. of force ghosts. Of, oh man. Mm. That, I, I don't think we're ready for that. Yeah, that was low, Heather. I didn't even expect that from you. <laughs> uh, what else? What I else? Well, do we somebody get? had to say it. Yeah, exactly. What else do we get out of there, Aaron? Uh, Lucasfilm will be working with various authors on a series of canonical prequel Star Wars stories. You heard it here first, folks. The canonical prequel Star Wars stories. <laughs> Announcement began with the reveal of uh, Queen's Shadow, a novel by E.K. Johnston. We've heard him before. Dives into the history of that's Padme okay. E.K. Johnson. Oops. That's okay. She's a girl. But that's USTR, okay. <laughs> Galactic Public Access. Um, dives into the history of Padme Amidala. Story seems to take place sometime between The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. And will follow Amidala as she transitions from being a queen to being a senator. Losing- Flopping into your bookstores March 5th, 2019. Yeah, losing a lot of wardrobe along the way. She's 
she was kind of playing after she became senator, right, Heather? It's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, there were very good pieces, though, when she became senator, but definitely toned down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. not not the thirteen outfits in episode one, you know. Exactly. And then uh, the next confirmed prequel novel we got is Master and Apprentice. We don't know much about this one, but it's a Claudia Gray novel. I love her. We'll focus on Obi Wan and Qui Gon and their adventures prior to the events of the Phantom Menace. Hmm. Given that the pair seem to be early into their master apprentice relationship in that film, we're going to assume that this book will pick up around the time that the two Jedi were paired together. And that is coming to you February 26, 2019. So basically, those books are like two weeks apart. Yep. <laughs> So, <laughs> so read get fast, your, everybody. Yeah. Get, get your free Audible, and we'll <laughs> start start listening right away because that is like back to back right there. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get with the times, stay current on the uh, news on the street. You gotta you gotta either read quick or yeah. get Audible. There you go. There you go. Then uh, last little bit of San Diego Comic Con news. Uh, Dear old Mark Hamill, uh, he was spotted, um, yeah, on the Comic Con floor yes. in costume yes. as a stormtrooper, his uh, stormtrooper disguised self. Yeah, first so. first awesome. order, first order, first order. Oh, uh, was it first order? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So a little spin on things. So everyone was panning through their pictures, is like, did I just talk to a short stormtrooper that was a first order? And it was Mark Hamill. Could have been. Could have been. So I, I thought that was cool. Nobody knows but him. Yeah. He also, I, I think he went Saturday as like Darth Vader, like a chef Darth Vader or something, or orange Darth Vader or something. And then, and then, fr- really? yeah, and Friday he did like Brooklyn, he, Brooklyn Nine Nine. He loves that show and basically saved it from being canceled. And so he dressed up in some kind of Brooklyn Nine Nine hmm. attire. So. He he was he was having fun. He was having fun. I love when stars do that. I think that's fantastic. Speaking of uh disguises, yeah. Um I think it was a few years ago, uh Brian Cranston bringing his name back again. Yes. He uh he went to Comic-Con disguised as himself. <laughs> <laughs> so he he had like a latex mask uh-huh. of himself as Walter White. Okay. And then he you know, he goes up to the panel. Everybody thinks it's a cosplayer, and he just takes off the mask and it's himself underneath. Well played, well played. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I love, I love, I love that uh, that stuff. I think it's great, and it's Mark Hamill, which is even better, you know. So, uh, and then finally, this wasn't really San Diego stuff, but uh, James Gunn gets fired over at from Guardian Galaxy Volume Three. Ooh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I have words to say about this one. <laughs> well, okay, Uh-oh. so so basically what happened is the the short version is uh somebody kind of dug up some old tweets from 10 years ago and they weren't nice tweets from James Gunn. Um and kind of slummed him we out. You can't repeat them here. Yeah, you, we will not repeat them there. You can look on Twitter if you would like, um and uh or the internet or whatever. And uh so yeah, Disney's like you're gone. So to me, this is just, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, what he said was not right. I'm not justifying that, but like he already, they already signed a contract. He already did one and two and a bunch of other stuff. And now you're firing him because somebody slummed him out. Uh, I mean, the worrying thing is that he defended the same logic, which got him fired. Um, by basically saying he's not disagreeing with the with the decision that's been made. Sure, sure. And it's like, yeah. I mean, is this where we're at now? Where it, it's it's like a takedown culture where, yep. You know, it's everybody's trying to take everybody else down on whatever dirt they can scoop up. Yep. Um, and it, it just never leaves the opportunity for people to change and develop and grow as people. Um, I don't know. I just don't think that 
I mean, Todd, were you a different person seven years ago than you were are today? I, I was a different person yesterday. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, there's I mean, just how, there's how no. How far back do we? Yeah, I, I just go. I just say there's no grace. There's just like, no. you, you know, and it's people. People love when people fall, you know, and they're like, okay, you're great, you're by. I mean, everyone loved James Gunn and loved Guardians of the Galaxy, but ooh, now that he said these things that have been on the internet for 10 years now it's like uh i don't like you anymore i i mean i get it what he said was not nice um but that was in the past you know what i'm saying and no one i don't know there's no forgiveness or and, grace it's and like he himself yeah go ahead yeah he himself said it was not nice yeah and he apologized he had already apologized for it um and I, I mean i get it disney has an image to uphold but is any kid watching their movie really going to be up to speed on this whole uh, on this whole drama? I don't think so. Um, and you know, just just like I said, it's like why? Where's the forgiveness? They by this standard, like di the entire Disney company must be comprised entirely of Mary Sue's or <laughs> Gary Stews with no flaws to their character whatsoever. And it's like you you can't. I don't know if it's realistic to demand that kind of expectation from people where like the slightest trip up online and it's not even the, the guy who uh, perpetuated this story in the beginning uh, Mike Cernovich. He's kind of like this alt right crazy dude uh, who's has his own fair share of nasty tweets. Um, and it's like, okay, the, the weight of this one guy, he could just, you know, dig this up and then suddenly somebody he's fired from not only this, but any future opportunities with Disney. Uh, and I just, I just think that's a loss. Yeah. Especially when we're talking about jokes here. We're not talking about like, Oh, he committed a, a atrocious crime years ago. Uh, it's, it's not even that it's, it's a, a, albeit poorly written in bad taste, unfunny jokes. Yeah. Um, yeah. but they're jokes nonetheless. I don't yeah. know. I'm, but, but Aaron, even I'm not happy. Yeah. But <laughs> even if he did have a crime, if he did the time and the punishment and did his due diligence, why are we then saying he can't be a part of society again? I just, I feel like, are you just going to be like, well, you stole a crayon from Bobby in third grade, so you're out of here. <laughs> yeah. You stole a free balloon. I mean, on free balloon day. This is something that we see all the time when people are running for political races, but now it's getting so mainstream where any kind of dirt that somebody could dig up on you uh, is fair game. And once it happens, you're like careers ruined, basically, and then move on. You know, I just, I don't know. It seems. It, you know, Disney signed a contract. He already, they already knew. I mean, if you want to do, I don't know. It's almost like now, like before they, they not do it, do it's their like own background check. Yeah, well, do a background check, and then they go. You know what? Just go on your Twitter and just make sure you delete anything offensive, because you never know what's going to happen. And now you have to be like so politically sensitive. Again, what he said was wrong, but it's like that was ten years ago, and it's been there for ten years. And all the success of the movies, they're not going to uh, remove that success of the two movies just because. Oh, he's you know. We're still out there. And I, quite frankly, Disney has quite a few offensive movies back in the day anyway. So <laughs> you're going to pull those yeah. too, you know? Um, remember when Donald Duck hiled Hitler? <laughs> uh, Oops. Yeah. Oops. I mean. There, Song of the South, anybody? Yeah. I mean, there's all these things, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. I, and, you know, it totally negates anything positive that he's done too. Um, like uh, we, there are some guardians of the galaxy three cast members on Twitter who were defending him. Yeah. Uh, basically uh, I think the, the most pissed off was Dave, but Bautista mm -hmm. uh, who said, what will you do when the cyber Nazis attack you? Who will stand by you? Who will, who will cowardly distance themselves from you? Who will punish you for horrible jokes in the past instead of defending you for inspiring millions? Yeah. Um, then Chris Pratt simply tweeted out, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Uh, taken from James, 
one nineteen. Yeah. So yeah. He he all capitalized James. So that's probably a yeah. tip of the hat tip to James Gunn. Tip of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, tip of the hat. Yeah. So I I don't know. This could be a whole. It's sad. Yeah, it's sad. It's just it's sad. sad. Yeah, it's, it's, this is where we're at. Yeah, it is. It is. Absolutely. So uh, that's our news of the week. Uh, <laughs> Dis- Disney is now the thought police. <laughs> oh. so, or probably tw- probably Twitter. Yeah. Let's let's just all delete Twitter, shall we? Oh, it's just it's get rid of Twitter. It's, move on with our lives. It's like anything in life. It's good and bad. So. Does so, so anything good happen on Twitter aside from our account of USDR Media? <laughs> all word, word, all, all case. Case. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's good things out there. I mean, it's just like the forest. There's good stuff and bad stuff. So. All right. Should we move on to Katina chat? Heather and your your furry your furry friend. This is why you watch the live stream, everybody. <laughs> cats. If you like cats, come to the live Hi, stream. Everybody, I'm back. I'm here. Uh, Nobody panic. Right, exactly. <laughs> Anything geeky going on with you there, Heather? Oh man. So I had some out of town friends come in, so I was barely on social media. What? Um, because I was with the real people. Oh, <laughs> oh. Those, those people. Think, think you're better than us, yeah. huh? I do. No, I'm not. No. So, um, yeah. So when I started seeing the whole, what's going on with James Gunn? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I sort of was just hanging out with friends. And we went back to the Renaissance Fair. So I geeked up there. Right on. I need, I need pictures, Heather. I need pictures of this. If, you know. They're on my personal social media. All right. All right. Well, I don't want to be like a I'm creep and grab them, you know. <laughs> fair. That fair. is fair. Yeah. yeah. But yes. So, but, awesome. and then obviously I rewatched all of the prequels in preparation for today. What? I, I know. That's amazing. Can you believe it? That's amazing. I like literally forced my friends to watch Phantom Menace with me. If were Are you still in your complete friends? run costume, because that would have been even better. Like, just stay in costume. We're gonna watch this. It's gonna be great. Yeah. So awesome. I know my friend Tish was like, "Please don't make me." And I'm like, "Come on, it'll be great. We'll just make fun of it together." <laughs> okay. So, Good. Anyway. Awesome. That's that's, all that's I got. great. Groovy. That's great. Aaron, how about you? Well, I finally did it. <gasps> I I bit the bullet. Okay. I chomped down hard on that sucker and uh, I started watching the Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So uh, I will I will provide s- uh, status updates as okay. I work my way through that. Nice. But only a few episodes in. Yeah. I've not had that much time, but right. You know, a little bit a day. I'll be caught up before you know it. Yeah, you that's go. right. That's right. You'll be ready. You'll be ready for Disney live streaming that bad boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I know. I mean, the announcement came out and I'm like, you know what? People seem to be excited about this. <laughs> it can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so uh it's it's more time George spent more time with Dave Filoni on Clone Wars than he did all six movies. So put that put that in perspective. So it's a real it's Star Wars, you know? It's Star Wars. So Yeah. And I and and and, All I, right. and honestly, like it, it progressively gets better. Yeah. Oh, I think okay. I that's, think that's encouraging. Yeah, I think like a slow. It's a slow build, but um, it starts really hitting a stride. I would say end of season two, and then it's just. I think it's 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 great. It's great stuff. So awesome. Yeah. So give give it a little time. Just give it a little bit. You know. Um. All right, yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. So, um, I did the same thing as Heather. I, I basically crammed in the three prequels over the last couple of days. So, that was my nerding out and went on the old Instagram and was documenting my 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 ver- uh my my 
watching of, of it uh throughout throughout the uh the movie so it was it was fun i had fun doing that so i feel like the kid in class who showed up with no homework done <laughs> <laughs> going off complete memory you know so and i make it look like i lost it i'm like looking in my bag yeah knowing i can't find it <laughs> it's not i don't it's know where there. it's at i, don't know I know at. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened I worked so right. hard on it. <laughs> I worked. I worked really hard on it. This great project. <laughs> yep. All right. Without further ado, shall we go to our main topic? Main topic. Main topic. And now for our feature presentation. All right. So, uh, if you haven't, we, we well we said it in the beginning, but we're going to say it again. We are going to talk about uh, Anakin Skywalker, the prequel. So. We talked about uh, Darth Vader and Anakin in the original trilogy in episode 79. So if you haven't seen that or listened to it, go check that out. Um, But today, what we're going to do is really kind of talk about the uh, upbringing of Anakin Skywalker. And um, so we start off with the uh, beloved Phantom Menace, which... uh, Well, for me personally, it's it's my lowest rated um film so um yeah heather you want to start us off with do you take copious notes nice i see I you notes, go. people aaron aaron where are your notes got, where are your notes my guide to the star um, wars universe it, it, in my pocket <laughs> it's gone <laughs> all right so so what uh, yes after, i'm up all right uh heather what are some of your takeaways from when you saw the phantom menace um yeah so my first initial reaction was is this really about anakin because <laughs> you have to get through a good chunk of the movie before we actually even really care about him um i mean he's cute and adorable he's got the bowl cut which every poor child has to go through at some point i guess yeah. and but it's not really until he leaves that environment that I'm like, okay, I care, I care about you as a child now. Um, so that's literally all I wrote down. I was like, an introduction of a little boy. <laughs> that's my reaction. <laughs> the Phantom Menace. <laughs> um, he, well, he totally disappears in the second act too. It's kind of weird. Like, um, if right. you're, if you're focused on Anakin through the movie, it's like, it, he, you get an introduction, there's a lot of, and then, but like the second act, he's totally gone. And then he shows up for the third act and, you know, this is pod racing. Everything's great. Uh, bada big, bada boom, you know, but I mean, if we go back to the introduction of him and Tatooine, um, you know, he goes to Padme, are you an angel? And she replies, what? An angel. I heard, <laughs> I heard the deep space Wait, pilots talk about reply? them. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's kind of interesting because this is almost like a take on, uh, you know, like a mermaid when people, you know, when, uh, you know, uh, sea voyagers were out in in the old ocean, you know, and talking about mermaids. And sailors? Stuff. Was that the word you were looking I don't, for? Dude, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Sailors. Um, but he's basically well, an astronaut is a star sailor. There, so. there you go. There you go. You know, so he says, I heard the deep space pilots talk about them. They live on the moons of. Diego, I think they're mostly beautiful. They're most beautiful creatures in the universe. So he's already, you know, he's like 60 year old. He's already hit it on Padme. So he's got game. Yeah. <laughs> he got game. He got creepy game, man. Um, Creep, there we go. Creepy game. Yeah. I, you know, it, the other thing too, he, you know, she's like, so you're a slave. And, and he, you know, he says, I, I'm, you know, I'm a boy or whatever. I am you know, I, my, my name is Anakin. So he's kind of, he's already defensive of that. Um, you know, I, th- he's got a lot of hope, a lot of, um, sweetness to him, you know, um, with, you know, how everything's related and how he basically comes up with the plot to, uh, you know, with the pod racing to get Qui-Gon his parts so he can get out of, you know, get out of Tatooine, which I, I thought was this interesting, too, you know? Because then he goes, yeah, that was, at the dinner table was like, Mom, you said the biggest problem in the universe is no one helps each other, you know? 
So I thought I thought that was sweet and fun. But Aaron, what did you think? Oh yeah, that's right. You didn't watch them. So what do you think, anyways? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, since you're so kind to ask, yeah, I am. Um, yeah. I feel like Anakin's more of a prop than a character, to be honest. Um. We don't see much development from him past like, oh, I'm a real boy, and <laughs> not, oh, I'm now not. I don't have a mom. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, he blows up the the ship, destroying or controlling all the robots, so There's that's that. good, I guess. Yeah. Um, he tried spinning, and that was a good trick. That was a good trick. <laughs> uh, he did win the pod race, so to his credit, he got a uh, Qui Gon and Obi out of a jam. Yeah. Um. But other than that, it's like he's kind of around for convenience um, and he doesn't really. I mean, the whole the whole time you watch the movie, you're like, this is supposed to be, you know, the most evil dude in the universe. Um, and man, I just wish they like started the movie and it was Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan just dueling Darth Maul. <laughs> 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 then we go straight into Attack of the Clones. Uh, but it's like but, who, who cares about Anakin when he's a kid and can't do anything and doesn't know any better yeah you know yeah because really the main purpose of him as a kid is to have Yoda give you know what, his prediction or whatever word I'm trying to there's the prophecy the prophecy you do that in like a five minute cold open yes. with the attack of the clones it's a crawl it's a crawl you know? yeah that's a crawl right there yeah so well, and then what do you think about and then uh, the Macwell concept and Macwell conception? I mean, like he's like a Jesus baby. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> um, you don't need to establish like a trade war and oh, we got to help the Gungans and oh, now we're trapped on Tatooine in order to tell us this. Just be like you know, have have a Yoda voice or an old old lady voice going. Once upon a time, long ago, <laughs> in the prophecies, there was a young boy. You know that was born from just the force. Don't, don't make it complicated. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, don't don't spend two hundred million dollars and just just say it, and we'll be like okay, and then we move on. I don't know. I'm, um, a, I'm a little salty about the Phantom Menace, if you can't tell. <laughs> well, uh, also I. You know, I don't know what's going on with me. Now I'm like, without Jar Jar, this movie is like even more dry than it should be. And I understand why <laughs> kids like gravitate towards it because if you remove Jar Jar, it's like the most boringest movie. I, I just, I don't know. I, it's I, C SPAN in space. Yeah, it is C SPAN in space. But I think, again, the only, to Heather's point, the only reason like, he does the whole midi chlorian thing is just establish that he's more powerful than Yoda. You know? I don't know. It's it, but you know, Aaron, to your point, like uh our kid, you know, is everyone that's a mass murderer born evil? You know what I'm saying? This is where kind of gets into the whole morality thing. Like, he's not born a bad guy, he just makes really poor decisions along the way. Sure. Yeah, but sure. All I'm saying is you could do that without a pod race in the middle of the desert. <laughs> you know? Well, then you don't get to meet Watto. And just have him, a... I don't know, just have him as a little kid wash up on shore. Okay. And some Jedi finds him and they're okay. like, oh, we got to take him in. Um, who are your parents? Oh, I don't know. I don't I know. I never had parents. What are those? I never saw my dad. And then they test his... Then they test his blood and he's for like infections or whatever. And then he's like, oh, he's more powerful than Master Yoda. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Start of episode two. Wow. That's all you need. <laughs> uh, there, I mean, there is, there is like one tender moment when he leaves his mom. And I thought that was really, it's pretty yeah. sweet. You know, like, you know, he, Anakin, yeah, Anakin goes, will I ever see you again? Shimmy says, what does your heart say? I hope so. Yes, I guess, you know. Uh, and then, will we see each other again? And Anakin goes, I will come back and free you, Mom. I promise. And then Shimmy goes, now be brave 
and don't uh and don't look back don't look back with his backpack his star wars backpack it's just so sad heather what did you think of that moment i mean it wasn't bad we <laughs> hate it right I- I do love Aaron's point of it, him being this kind of prop kind of leading up to it. Because for me, I don't care about him until he's in front of the Jedi. And you've got, like, (laughs) not that I don't care about him. He's a cute little boy. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, There's there's lots of those. But (laughs) 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 I don't know. I guess fine the ship breaks down they walk in there's a kid i would have loved it if the kid like stowed away somehow on the ship oh. or somehow it was just a different connection yeah. point i think yeah. um instead of this hey let's come to camp or xavier's school for gifted children <laughs> yeah but see that's <laughs> that- that's the other thing the jedi council are just a bunch of punks like they're just punking on Anakin, he's too old. Like Mace is like, he's too old. You know, or, you know, like uh, when Qui-Gon's like, you know, will you see the boy? Bring us before him, you know, bring him before us. I'm like, like, what else are you guys doing? You're doing nothing. That's why you're all dead. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Too busy having some Jedi coffee. Yeah, no, it gets me hot. The Jedi console, yeah, Jedi console gets me hot. Okay. But see, to me, that's an interesting story. Well, he's too old. Well, then let's flesh that out. Yeah. Why is he too old? Like, because I they don't know steal that he, babies. I didn't know he was too old. They steal babies. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, the First Order learned from the Jedi Council, oh, you steal the babies and then you train them up and they're good, you know, you know. I don't know. This is where, this is where. Some of kinda... us are late bloomers. <laughs> what do you want us to do? Yeah. This is where it gets kind of dogmatic, know. you know, and that's where, that's yeah. where. The fall happens, so that's a whole other topic. All right, so let's move on. Aaron's already moved on to Attack of Clones, so let's move with him to Attack of Clones. Um, so we meet Attack of Clones, and Love now it. we're ten years, I think, from the Phantom Menace. So, um, mm-hmm. so he's grown. He grown up. He grown up. Now he's like a supermodel, Anakin. So. Um, Obi Wan's got some weird hair. Anakin's got some weird hair. I don't know what's going on. They got both weird hair. But uh, so <laughs> he's got like the rat tail thing. Yeah, he's got the on. rat tail, and then Obi Wan's looks like Jesus. He's got the big, you know, like kind of <laughs> somewhat mullet, but not really I'm a glad mullet. Someone else said it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you've seen the memes where, like, you know, you know, like they have it on, you know, like there's there's Saint Mary, and then there's like Obi Wan Kenobi, <laughs> like. <laughs> he looks like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we meet. Basically, they're going to meet Padme because Padme just got attacked when she landed on Coruscant, and Anakin's really nervous. Correct. Heather, what did you think of this scene? Oh my gosh! I uh... <laughs> okay. Okay. I have issues with Anakin. <laughs> He's a creep. In the second film. Lay it out. I'm like, it It feels like it's the 10-year-old boy who's like, I can totally go for the 14-year-old babysitter. Like, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like, I just, yeah. there is a clear age difference. And then... Let's forget the age difference. Like, dude, that's yeah. a senator. Right. You're a young pup thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's just rash and he's just so. What's the word that I used? I didn't write it down because I was so annoyed with it, I think. I can't even take notes. I just, I just can't even take notes. It frustrated me so much. I don't know. I just, he just, there's just. No sense of maturity in this kid. Yeah. He's he's like, I want that. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm going to be suave about it. Because now look at me. I'm in my robes and now I'm training to be a Jedi. So, well, And there's like right away, 
I mean, they established that like he's basically defying Obi Wan's teaching, and you you know, and basically right. Obi Wan's like, you will learn your place, young one. And they're they're arguing right in front of, um, you know, they're, they're arguing right in front of uh, you know Padme. And it's like, dude, this ain't cool, man. <laughs> so I don't know. It's well, just how bad. I mean. She goes, Annie, you've grown up. And he's like, all of his manhood just like shrinks in front of her. Being <laughs> called Annie. I don't know. Annie. Uh, L- literally. Have been literally a hint right there. Ph- yeah, literally and physically. He's like, oh. Friend zone. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yes. But it was super creepy and awkward. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it there. Now, and that's the other thing, too. It's like, um, Aaron, help me out. What's the word when you're captive and you then crush on them? What's that word? Stockholm syndrome. Yes, that's pretty much what I feel like is happening here in, you know, uh, Attack of Clones. But you don't get it. It was love at first sight. Dude, he was he's been crushing on her since. He left Naboo when he was six, and like to like Heather's point, he's like, "That's my hot babysitter. I'm going back." You know, like, and uh, you know, he comes back ten years later, and you know, I mean, there's just creepy things. Like, she shot the cameras because he doesn't want her watching her, and I just like, dude, this is like total creepy. You know, then we get to uh, part of the plot when they're trying to find the assassin and. He kind of he takes her back to be the bodyguard, and even still, she's kind of un. He's, mm. She's kind of showing her place and showing her maturity, and she's like, "Excuse me, my lady, I'm the secured local security." And uh, yeah, he, he. But then you know we get we get great lines from him like, "I don't like the sand; it's coarse and rough <laughs> and irritating. It gets everywhere. Not like here. Here's everything is soft and smooth." I can't handle it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I literally, it's like, Ugh. it's like, um, it's like a junior high s- students, like idea of how love works. Yeah. Well, I, but or how romance works, I should say. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, basically what we're establishing that he's still super powerful. He's ridiculously immature. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, Dogging on Padme. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much, you know. And the other thing that that really the is other thing that I did know. Sure. Is all the other Jedi are in bright clothing. Anakin, mm. dark. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, yeah. he's going to go to the dark side. You've set him <laughs> up. It's just a phase, mom. Just a phase, mom. <laughs> It's like I just I'm just going gas for a little bit, you know, no big deal, you know. Anakin, we only do browns. Well, I'm doing black, you know. <laughs> One more defiance. Yeah. Anyway, I just imagine the Jedi comment. like uh like you go to the tailor and they have all the swatches of fabric and they have like an approved color set. And Anakin's <laughs> just like, nah. <laughs> Give me something else. Black. He's like he's like a Lego Batman. He's like, I only deal with black and dark grays, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's just, you know, he's defying Obi-Wan. They, they definitely, um, they have that kind of going on. And, you know, Obi-Wan still doesn't kind of trust him because he is brash and arrogant and, um. You know, they mentioned that uh, in the Jedi Temple, like he he's oh, he wants talking to Mace and Yoda. He's like, I don't think he's ready, you know, and he's arrogant and brash. And Yoda's like, hmm, yeah, we're seeing that a lot lately. You know, they're on the Twitter and the Instagram and, you know, just being, you know, punks with their, their talents, you know. So I don't know. I it's it's good. The, the other thing that really is established here is. Uh, Palpatine is in Anakin's ear, man. And, um, you know, that's apparent. That's apparent even from the beginning of the movie where he's like, he kind of knows where everything's going on. He's like, hey, didn't Obi-Wan and Anakin just come back? Why don't he, 
why isn't uh you know he um uh padme go in under control of obi-wan you know so i thought that's kind of interesting too you know lots of creepiness uh yeah. on all levels yeah yeah well and then he even says at this point he's like you're becoming a far greater jedi than i've ever imagined blah 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 and you'll be the greatest one day you know so that's this is where it gets into you know the psychology part of it like if you hear that a lot you're gonna believe it you know it's kind of one of those things mm-hmm. where and palpatine knows what he's doing he's just the puppet master he's just anakin's just he's got him you know and you know um he mentions obi-wan being his father figure but also he he's 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 definitely uh loving him some uh emperor palpatine you know It's um, how do I put this in a way that's uh, family appropriate? Um, <laughs> it's very much like a, uh, a a a predator grooming his victim. Wow. Yeah. Well, he yeah he goes. Yeah, he, just gonna let that yeah sit there. Yeah, we'll just let that <laughs> simmer for a little bit. But this is this is exactly what he says to him, uh, and he goes the you, you know uh, I wrote this down. He's like the most gifted Jedi I. I have ever known even more powerful than Master Jedi. Yeah. Ma- Master Yoda? Yeah. No, pa- that's what Palpatine said to Anakin. You know, you're going to, you know, uh, you're, gotcha. you're even more powerful than Master Yoda, you know. So it's like he's already playing the seed. And you you constantly hear that. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm awesome. You know, I am a rock star and I wear black, you know. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts on our attack of the clones anakin there is some... he... go ahead go for it oh. no you okay thank you <laughs> um i think the only thing i noticed was and this is potentially my one prop to hating christensen and he doesn't get a lot so mm. take it for what it's worth is when he goes looking for his mother. Oh yeah, and finds her. And spoiler, she doesn't make it. What? No. I know. I said spoiler. <laughs> no. Maybe not loud enough, but I did say it. Yeah. Um, is that you see this twinge in his eye, like you see all those midi chlorians sort of. It's it's like the the school of fish in Finding Nemo oh. that change the shape to what you, they need to do. Yeah. I feel like all the midichlorians are like he 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 <laughs> in, in evil because you see it in his eye, which is a killer acting. Yeah, prop to him. Where basically I wrote down bye bye Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> they they gone. Yeah, it's, because you see it just in his eye, and yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. There, it's a switch, and then and then he has that kind of emotional scene, remorse in Lars Homestead, um, yeah. just uh, you know, kind of crying and you know, just like I killed him, I slaughtered him like animals, you know, um, and kind of realizing like he shouldn't have done that, but he went way to the far side, you know. Um, yeah. The other good scene, the other thing I love the scene is when he comes off the speeder bike and he's holding his mom, you know, and, and the wrappings mm. and just his look. It's just like, uh, and then the other kind of cool part is at the grave site where he's like, I failed you uh, and I'll never do that again. You know, it's just like, there's some cool little parts right there. It's just like, Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> mm hmm. Shall we move on to Revenge of the Sith? I suppose. I suppose. Okay, so um, the opening sequence is really interesting because I think at this point, um, I really love the opening sequence. And in fact, I really, I, I love Revenge of the Sith. Like I was crushing on Revenge of the Sith. I'm like, oh, this is so good. Um, just they're in sync. They're flying like to you know, brothers in the force and it's all very harmonious and you don't get a lot of that um, tension, that awkward tension that you saw in Attack of the Clones. And I feel like they're more like a brother relationship, you know, more of a less, it's less positional and it's more, there's more respect there than you've seen 
in Attack of the Clones when he's just being a teenage punk, you know? Yeah, they're they're finally peers. Yes, yeah. But Anakin's got the weird hair now. Anakin's got this weird mullet thing going on. I'm like, what is up? Yeah. Who who decided to do these kind of hairstyles? I don't I don't know. It was probably a boy band haircut decision <laughs> thing that took place. Just give him this it's weird. Like, okay. Yeah. You're the hot one now. <laughs> <laughs> you get the big hair, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, you definitely. You you definitely see that con- togetherness, which I think uh, is kind of powerful when you get to the end of the film where, you know, well, we'll get there in a second. But, um, you know, the real big thing here is the council, again, is a bunch of punks. <laughs> they put him, you know, they put him on the council. He, he gets kind of hot here where they put him on the council, but he's not a Jedi master. So he gets kind of hot. And Obi Wan's like, you'll learn your place, dude. Just get sit down, you know, <laughs> like take your seat. Um, what you guys think of that? Oh, my okay. note. What does your note say? You can't sit at the grown up table. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's kind of. It's I'm like just thanks, saying. yeah, yeah. He's kind of. He's still in the same room, but he's at the kitty table still. You know, he's like the oldest kid at the kitty table. <laughs> yeah. But but what they like the chairs kind of too small. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're like the table is just a little bit yes. too low. Yeah, exactly. Knee, knees are sticking out. But what they Which do basically is what Papa P does. Yes. He says you realize they're putting you at the kids' table. Yep. Yep. Well, and and the other thing that Jedi Council does is they're taking the trust between Anakin and Obi Wan, and basically Obi Wan's dealing with basically telling him these are the this is what the true intention of this is we we, we just want you to spy on papa p you know because they don't trust him you know and that puts a rift that that puts a rift in um anakin and obi-wan you know which was there but now it's not and it's back again you know um you know so yeah it's not it's not good it's just not good and then there's um nope the scene where obi-wan is now going so palpatine tells anakin you should be the one to go search for general grievous and they decide to use obi-wan instead and that was the that was kind of the final straw and in that scene Anakin's in the shadows and Obi-Wan's still in the light and it's kind of a cool little like yeah this is we're this is not going to end well you know but I think my favorite scene out of Revenge of Sith is and we talked about this before I we did an episode on this a while back uh uh Aaron was the opera scene I mean it's just mm-hmm. it's magical it's magical it is Here's what I appreciate most about Anakin in the prequels. Yeah. And it's kind of summed up in Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Um, he, to me, represents um, that place in your life where everything's gone wrong and you know it's entirely your fault and that you could have done things better, but you didn't. And you have nobody to blame but yourself. Mm. And you have to live with the consequences of that. And yeah. Anakin is that the character. Mm. And I think that's that part of him. I appreciate the most, I would say. Dude, that's a deep cut. I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. He had so much good going for him. Yeah. You know, he was supposed yeah. to fulfill the prophecy. He had superpowers greater than Yoda. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody loved him apparently. Yeah. And you know, he just kind of threw it all away. But and, why did and, why do you, you know, think it wasn't all at once either? Yeah, yeah. Okay, why so do you th- step by step? Uh, as for why that happened, I mean, part of it's uh, on Palpatine for corrupting him. Yeah. Uh, part of it, I think, is on the Jedi Order because you know we love to hate we love to hate on him because he's all creepy, but. You know what? What else can you expect from a kid who's been raised with like no social interaction? Yeah. Um, 
and you know taught not to form attachments and things like that uh so not entirely on him but you know you you should probably start to worry about him when he goes and slaughters an entire village of tuscan raiders like <laughs> maybe something's not going quite right quite right with that boy um well you, it's, but, it's interesting you say that because yoda felt that in the force he's like i felt terrible yeah. pain so did they have a counseling? And then he didn't do anything yeah, about like, it. Did they have a counseling session afterwards, or they just said, "Oh, it's just a phase," you know? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, with with police officers, like every time they fire their their weapon, they have to do a, a detailed report about it. So it's like, do they do that for Jedi? Can they just turn on their lightsabers whenever? <sighs> or, I mean, you just know, felt it through the Force. He must have. Yeah, terrible. You know, he's what, a terrible what, pain. What did, he do, you know? what did he do? Yeah. Well, you know what he did. He just, I, you know, it's almost like too that they want to ignore because they're stuck on this prophecy. They kind of ignore some of his big faults instead of trying to, you know, change that or change the behavior or you know, like, dude, you're not going. It's almost like. It's like you're not going to go out on the field until you you got this figured out because you're screwing up everything time every time you go out, even though you are very powerful. You yeah. Know? Turn in your badge and your gun. <laughs> uh, we're going to put you on on paid leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he it's because he's the golden child, right? And everybody loves him because he's part of the prophecy and. Nah, nah, nah. And so it's like he shouldn't have been on the council in the first place if they're not going to give him a rank of master. But it feels like they put him on there as, as a concession, mm. you know. And then later, well, I guess Palpatine has something to do with that too. But yeah, yeah. it's all bad. <laughs> Heather, what, but, you what know, else? he's still it's it's still his responsibility. Yeah, it, and that's absolutely that's the sad part about it. Absolutely, yeah. Heather, what else did you did you take out of Revenge of Sith, Anakin? Oh, okay. I mean, I thought of some... I, there, I have another note, but it has nothing to do with Anakin, That's so fine. I'll wait on that no, one. No, well. Um, but yeah, so I was just thinking about this as you were making your statements, Aaron, and it, I wonder if there was this element of, well, this is what we do. We bring someone in, there's, you know, an apprentice, and they learn in the thing, and then this is how it works. They learn this path, they learn the next step, and then we can set them off. But because Anakin continually didn't do any of that, right? I don't know that the council knew the council knew what to do with him. It's you know the parent who's like, I had four children. The first three did fine. I don't know what happened to the last one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. None of my yeah. previous. I suppose, but then that responsibility shifts to Obi Wan, and but I mean, again, I know you're you know? going right. You you find these things too in the Clone Wars where he does great things, but then also he does very rash things that don't make a lot of sense. And you know Obi Wan is trying to counsel him all the time, and um, you know Obi Wan's on on he's trying to not disappoint his master Qui Gon Jinn. You know, it's like he told me I'm supposed to do this, and I need to train the boy, and I'm doing the best I can. And I think Obi-Wan does the best he can, you know? Um, yeah. But like you said, Aaron, earlier, I mean, it's, it's, it's on Anakin at the end. I mean, you can't, you can, you can place the blame so much, but there is definitely a lot of different faults that kind of shape Anakin and those influencers into what he is um, mm -hmm. by the, by the end of the movie, you know? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like, like I said earlier, you get that twinge in his eye after his mother passed. And the minute he knows that he's about to lose Padme, it's that twinge comes back again. Yeah. He's going to do whatever he's got to do, regardless of the consequences. Right. Well, and I think that's kind of the, um, the irony of the whole thing. He's technically doing it for love, but it's a very selfish way to do it, you know? Right. Um, he's trying to control something he can't, which is death, and that he's trying to force something that's 
you know, and even Palpatine says this in the opera scene, you know, it's unnatural, you know, what they're going to do. And that's only through a Sith, you know, and um, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just he's trying to do it for love, but it's a very selfish way of doing that. And that bites him in the end, you know, so. Yeah, it's just, it's rough. So when you get to that third act and you, or really to the end where, you know, Obi-Wan stows away on Padme's ship and Mustafar, I think that scene, that, that to me, the, just the little platform scene alone is, it's so good, you know, just a lot of great cinematography and just him, like, I did this all for you. And then he force chokes her, like, like. You know, it's like, what's going on with that? You know? Oh, yeah, that's um, it's probably a bad sign. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, let's be real. That's kind of, it's very much like spousal abuse. Like you have you're in this relationship and he's already kind of shown signs that we talked about in Attack of Clones with the, you know, slaughtering of innocence um and padman's like oh you're kind of scary me but i'm in love with you it's cool and then you come to this point and she basically breaks down and says you're you're going down a path i cannot follow you know and then he takes it upon himself like this is my new empire and you're part of it we're gonna and you know he says the same thing he says to luke which um you know uh, he's basically like, we can rule the galaxy together you know and make our own rules which is very interesting. Another thing, you know, again, themes keep on coming back, Georgie. So I appreciate that, you know, um, cause he's already thinking about, I am the best. I'm going to take down Papa P and be, you know, I'm going to rule the galaxy, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It is a bad sign. <laughs> I also, I also wrote down to, um, that fight at the end with Obi-Wan is not only like a force thing, but it's also a very emotional thing for both, Mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and then, you know, we joke about the high ground, but once, you know, once that happens, you know, it just like, you know, Obi-Wan says, I love you. And Anakin says, I hate you, which is just like completely polar opposites of where this all started when they, you know, Hey, you know, how you doing? Nice to meet you on 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 the Nabooian cruiser. And now you get to the point where, <laughs> you know, you know, it's like total cheese, you know, oh, you're a Jedi too. Great. I love you. Um, but then you get to the point where Obi-Wan's, I loved you like a brother. And Anakin's like, I hate you. It's uh very interesting. Can't get worse than that. No. No. You can for sure feel the desperation in both of them. To be like, I'm desperate to beat you and be better than you. I'm desperate to win you back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Obi-Wan is is trying, even at the end, he's like, we don't have to do this. I got the high ground. <laughs> you know? um, he's trying to like make that, make that amend one last time, even though it, it's not looking good. He, Obi-Wan continues to try to pour that energy into him. And Anakin's at this point, Anakin got has his mind, you know, um, just he 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 has his mind focused on like I am going to be the top dog regardless of what you guys do, you know. Um, yeah, and the other thing I, I wrote this down. I mean, we, I know we talked about before, but um, just when he enters the temple and with the kids, it's just like <laughs> gets to me every time. I'm just like and. and <sighs> And he does, and, and that's why it's such like a beautiful thing. And we talked about this from a filmmaking perspective. You don't have to get into blood and guts and all this other stuff. The way it he does it, um, not only with the children, but the, also how the Jedi go out. Like there's even the shot where you know Ala Security, which is the blue tweet leak, and they kind of raise the camera up so you don't see her get shot. And there's just a couple of cool like little things where. You don't really have to see everything, but you, the emotional impact is very much there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I don't know. That scene gets me every time and just like, uh, 
yeah, it's just, it's very powerful. So we get to the end and Palpatine lies to him one more time, just one more time. So um, saves him from being toasty and uh, he, he lies to him and basically says that in his anger, he kills Padme. And I think that was his end game all along because he knew once he had control of Anakin just for himself, he was going to be his minion the whole time through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, he, I don't, mm, do you think he manipulated Padme at all to maybe fall in love with him? It's not I beyond think, imagination. Yeah. No, I think, I think definitely. Because Anakin, I don't, you know, we don't know um, how much interaction he had between, you know, when we left uh, Phantom Menace to attack the clones, but it's clear that there was some dialogue and I'm sure Anakin, it's like that creepy uncle. I don't know. Like, he's just like, Anakin's like, oh, I really like Padme. And, you know, um, you know, Palpatine's like, oh, you should go talk to her i'll figure i'll figure out a way to that you could talk to her you know or something like that and i i i yeah i mean again when when they said you know even the beginning of attack of clones he's like yeah didn't obi-wan just come back from the outer rim he knew anakin says pad you know padawan so it's like that's a it's a win-win you know chicken dinner you know so Mm -hmm. yeah i totally i totally think anakin confessed to palpatine about his mad dog crush on um padme and he fed it what do you think heather if i didn't believe it before i believe it now (laughs) um i mean i i think a lot of things were put into place and you place your bets and you look at the odds and it made sense for it to go that way yeah um Yeah. Yeah. So, in conclusion, Aaron, what do you think of the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker? Um, I mean, I said I said it earlier. There's uh about what I think about um the significance of him as a character and what that means. Yeah. Uh, I there are times when it could be executed better. Um, yeah, we could just remove Phantom Menace entirely as far as I'm concerned. Um, but you know, if some of the dialogue was better and, uh, I guess some of the scenes were less awkward and creepy, um, I think we'd have a much better, um, compelling case for the character. But that said, what we do have is still, um, somewhat believable that we that we get to where darth vader is today Mm. and um you know i'll i'll take that yeah yeah how about you heather yeah um a little bit in agreement i mean i think phantom menace was longer than it needed to be for what the purpose of the film was sure sure um but the over arc story of the prequels I don't hate. I think it makes sense. I think some of the nuances should have been cleaned up and could have been handled differently. Yeah. Um, but um, I'll be intrigued now to rewatch Rogue One, having just seen all three prequels just from a timeline standpoint, then leading up to the magnificent ending of rogue one right, to yeah. go straight into new hope yeah um and just how much more different that's going to speak about anakin aka you know darth yeah Vader. Mm-hmm. so yeah i mean big arc i'm for littler arcs could have been nuanced better yeah yeah well i i think it just goes back to why he's such a rage monster um and he it darth vader is is who he is it kind of goes back to what you said earlier aaron it's just as far as like it's all about regret man it's literally he lost everything on what 
Palpatine fed him and he's not the man he was. He's half the man, you know, or as Obi-Wan puts it, more machine than man, you know? And Mm -hmm. um, I think that really speaks volumes to, like you said, like all those times that hatred just, it's fed, it's self self-inflicted hatred because he's like I, I had everything and i lost it and now um you know the other thing that we don't really talk about too is the kid part where he's like he thinks that his you know his unborn child is dead because he killed you know killed them and uh killed padme and then um you know to find all those years later that his son is alive is kind of trippy, you know, and he also probably thought, well, wait a minute, what else is Palpatine lying about? Because how is that possible? If I killed Padme before she had the baby, how is my son alive? And then it's even more creepier where Palpatine's like, oh, we got to convert him to the dark side right away. (laughs) It's just a weird, you know, and so Vader at that point probably knows that I'm, I'm definitely an exit out, you know, just like Dooku was an exit out in, you know, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, you know, Palpatine's like, do it. And you're like, oh, dude. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I, just, I think it's very interesting. Um, the character arc, arc of Anakin Skywalker. I think it's one of the best things in cinema. And you can definitely learn a lot um, from him. Um, and, and at the end, again, like we talked about in the, in the original trilogy, there's still redemption, which is even more powerful than all this stuff that we just covered. <laughs> Cause it's, it's a downward spiral. That's it's true. It's a downward spiral, you know, and mm-hmm. it's not until Luke, his son shows some love and like, dude, I love you, Papa. You know, it's like, oh man, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Bring it, bring it back home. So yeah, yeah. I think we could go on and on for uh, with with Anakin, but uh, we could, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's uh, it is definitely a, a probably one of the biggest star stories in Star Wars. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Shall well, we? I shall we wrap about <laughs> wrap it up? That about wraps it up. Wrap it up yeah. on a burrito. Well. Thanks again for listening to another episode of WSTR, Galactic Public Access. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can go and get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash WSTR. You can have your pick from over 180,000 titles for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, device of choice. Mm -hmm. Heck, just burn it onto a CDR and... Pop it in your Walkman. What? Your Sony Walkman? Yeah. You'll probably need many CDs, yeah, but... Right, right, exactly. Uh, but for you, the listeners of WSDR Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And hey, you could support the podcast while you do so, so it would be much appreciated. And we have so a... To- we, and there's a book... Well, as of this recording, the book's coming out tomorrow, but... When this episode drops, it will be already out. Thrawn Alliances is coming out, and it's 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 uh, Thrawn and Anakin. So there you go. It's a one-two combo. Perfect. And then you could you could try it out for thirty days and get a free book. So there you go. And hey, if you don't want to, if you don't want to continue the service, you think it stinks, send it back, cancel it, no questions asked. Right. And guess what? You get to keep that free book. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Listen to it over and over again yeah. and think about how you scammed Audible. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But hey, but our check will still clear. Right, exactly. But we're we're gonna we're gonna listen to Thrawn Alliance Alliances. So there you go. It's happening. So with that, check us out on social media. WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. We want to hear from you, so please comment, tweet, rate us on iTunes, email us at mailbox at wstrmedia.com, leave us a voicemail at 630-557-9787. Oh, 
If you leave us a voicemail, we can play it on an upcoming podcast. And you can catch our entire back catalog of episodes at www.wstrmedia.com. Yep. And hey, we are live streaming our recording sessions every Monday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time yeah. on our YouTube channel. So please go over there, subscribe so you don't miss another broadcast. Yep. And hey, you can hit us up in the chat and influence the episode. <laughs> Take over Last our hijack. Hijack, yeah. Yep. Last but certainly not least, we got merch. Merch. Limited run. Professional exclusive. podcasting. This is what you get for listening all the way to the end. <laughs> you get a limited run of t-shirts. Head on over to www.tspring.com slash wstrmedia hyphen t. That's tspring, T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com slash wstrmedia hyphen T-E-E. There you go. Head on over there. Pick us up a pick yourself up a t shirt. Yep. Maybe it's a friend's birthday coming up. Um maybe maybe you're getting married and you need <laughs> something to wear. Hey. Hey. Head on over. Hey. We you can, know. I think we got tank tops too, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, summertime. Okay. Man. Yeah. That's what I got. Oh. Okay. okay. So for him and her, yeah. It's for you. <laughs> right, right. Now you know all the ways to get a hold of us, support us, give us some love. Muchas gracias. Mm-hmm. Next week. Episode 82, where we have a interviewer with interview with a vampire. I mean, a stormtrooper storm from the 501st. There you go. And with that, I think it's about time we sign off. So this is Podcasting. Podcasting. We did it, team. We did it. Good job, everybody.